This is the Word of God, a powerful, life-changing set of books including history, law, poetry, prophecy, the gospel of Jesus, and more. In about 15 minutes per day, you can read the entire Bible in a year and see and hear what God has done. Let's read. The Second Book of Kings, Chapter 1 Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Ahaziah fell down through the lattice in his upper room that was in Samaria, and was sick. So he sent messengers, and said to them, Go, inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I will recover of this sickness. But the Lord's angel said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and tell them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you go to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore the Lord says, You will not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you will surely die. Then Elijah departed. The messengers returned to him, and he said to them, Why is it that you have returned? They said to him, A man came up to meet us, and said to us, Go, return to the king who sent you, and tell him, The Lord says, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you send to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you will not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you will surely die. He said to them, What kind of man was he who came up to meet you and told you these words? They answered him, He was a hairy man, and wearing a leather belt around his waist. He said, It's Elijah, the Tishbite. Then the king sent a captain of fifty with his fifty to him. He went up to him, and behold, he was sitting on the top of the hill. He said to him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down. Elijah answered to the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, then let fire come down from the sky and consume you and your fifty. Then fire came down from the sky and consumed him and his fifty. Again he sent to him another captain of fifty, with his fifty. He answered him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down quickly. Elijah answered them, If I am a man of God, Then let fire come down from the sky and consume you and your fifty. Then God's fire came down from the sky and consumed him and his fifty. Again he sent the captain of a third fifty with his fifty. The third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and begged him and said to him, Man of God, please let my life and the life of these fifty of your servants be precious in your sight. Behold, fire came down from the sky and consumed the last two captains of fifty with their fifties. But now, let my life be precious in your sight. The Lord's angel said to Elijah, Go down with him. Don't be afraid of him. Then he arose and went down with him to the king. He said to him, The Lord says, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, Is it because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, you will not come down from the bed where you have gone up, but you will surely die. So he died according to the Lord's word which Elijah had spoken. Jehoram began to reign in his place in the second year of Jehoram the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? 2 Kings chapter 2 When the Lord was about to take Elijah up by a whirlwind into heaven, Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Please wait here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? He said, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please wait here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. He said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? He answered, Yes, 
I know it. Hold your peace. Elijah said to him, Please wait here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. He said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Then they both went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood opposite them at a distance, and they both stood by the Jordan. Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the waters, and they were divided here and there, so that they both went over on dry ground. When they had gone over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken away from you. Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be on me. He said, You have asked a hard thing. If you see me when I am taken from you, it will be so for you. But if not, it will not be so. As they continued on and talked, behold, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. He saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He also took up Elijah's mantle that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took Elijah's mantle that fell from him and struck the waters and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had also struck the waters, they were divided apart, and Elisha went over. When the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho facing him saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. They said to him, See now, there are with your servants fifty strong men. Please let them go and seek your master. Perhaps the Lord's spirit has taken him up and put him on some mountain or in some valley. He said, Don't send them. When they urged him until he was ashamed, he said, Send them. Therefore they sent fifty men, and they searched for three days, but didn't find him. They came back to him while he stayed at Jericho, and he said to them, Didn't I tell you, don't go? The men of the city called to Elisha, Behold, please, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the land is barren. He said, Bring me a new jar, and put salt in it. Then they brought it to him. He went out to the spring of the waters and threw salt into it and said, The Lord says, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from there any more death or barren wasteland. So the waters were healed to this day, according to Elisha's word which he spoke. He went up from there to Bethel. As he was going up by the way, some youths came out of the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you baldy! Go up, you baldy! He looked behind him and saw them, and cursed them in the Lord's name. Then two female bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of those youths. He went from there to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. 2 Kings chapter 3 Now Jehoram the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel and Samaria in the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah, and he reigned twelve years. He did that which was evil in the Lord's sight but not like his father and like his mother, for he put away the pillar of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he held to the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nabat, with which he had made Israel to sin. He didn't depart from them. Namisha, king of Moab, was a sheep breeder, and he supplied the king of Israel with one hundred thousand lambs and the wool of one hundred thousand rams. But when Ahab was dead, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. King Jehoram went out of Samaria at that time, and mustered all Israel. He went and sent to Jehoshaphat the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me against Moab to battle? He said, I will go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, Which way shall we go up? Jehoram answered, The way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched for seven days along a circuitous route. There was no water for the army or for the animals that followed them. The king of Israel said, Alas, 
For the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Isn't there a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? One of the king of Israel's servants answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who poured water on the hands of Elijah, is here. Jehoshaphat said, The Lord's word is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. The king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Elisha said, As the Lord of armies lives before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I respect the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward you nor see you. But now bring me a musician. When the musician played, the Lord's hand came upon him. He said, The Lord says, Make this valley full of trenches. For the Lord says, You will not see wind, neither will you see rain. Yet that valley will be filled with water, and you will drink, both you and your livestock and your other animals. This is an easy thing in the Lord's sight. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. You shall strike every fortified city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree, and stop all springs of water, and mar every good piece of land with stones. In the morning, about the time of offering the sacrifice, behold, water came by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. Now when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, they gathered themselves together, all who were able to put on armor, young and old, and stood on the border. They rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone on the water, and the Moabites saw the water opposite them as red as blood. They said, This is blood. The kings are surely destroyed, and they have struck each other. Now therefore, Moab, to the plunder! When they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and struck the Moabites, so that they fled before them, and they went forward into the land attacking the Moabites. They beat down the cities, and on every good piece of land each man cast his stone and filled it. They also stopped all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees, until in Ker Hereseth all they left was its stones. However, the men armed with slings went around it and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too severe for him, he took with him seven hundred men who drew a sword to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his oldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him for a burnt offering on the wall. There was great wrath against Israel, and they departed from him and returned to their own land.